Um, let me, I am Reverend Pukunzi preaching this morning. Um, and I am here to start the service. Um, I don't think I know my finger from my toes, but I hope that you will just um, come with me. Do you have a... Do you have the order of service or we... Okay. Okay, let me just uh, take this time to welcome everybody and just to say that um, the, the Spirit of the Lord is with us this morning and that we thank God for raising us up so we can come and praise the Lord. Uh, Reverend Pukunzi is on his way coming. He thought that the service starts at 9 o'clock, he says. Um, so he is somewhere around just turning around and coming through. We will take the first uh, reading, no, the first hymn, Breathe on me, O breath of God, hymn number 300 in the uh, Methodist hymnals, and then we will take it from there. We will rise and sing together, Breathe on me, O breath of God. <laughs> seated and we will have to take our pray, uh, prayer of praise. Let us pray together. Lord God, we thank you for this day and we thank you for this morning. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you have welcomed us into your sanctuary. We bless your name and we glorify you. Being the God of our parents and the God of our ancestors. God who has been, who is and who will be forever. Bless the Spirit morning, lead us, Lord Jesus, our minds, our spirits, and our being that will be here to worship you, to bless your name, and to praise your loving goodness. We thank you that throughout the week, Lord, you have provided with your enduring mercies on daily, daily basis. And we thank you that you have given us this day, our day, Lord Jesus, open opportunities, you have opened for us times and those spaces 
where we did not know that we could go in. Lord, we know that we have um, been rescued even on from things that we did not know that we were in danger of. Lord, your name is holy. Your name is glorious. Your name is gracious. And le lead us this morning as you lead our children, as you lead our great ch grandchildren, as you lead those generations that will still be coming, that your name will be glorified forever, that your holy, your holy will fill us and fill our hearts, that your, your, your presence fill this place, that we will en en encounter you, and each and every one of us live here filled with the Spirit as a witness and as that one who is going to go and proclaim holiness throughout the land. We thank you that you are a God who has inspired the saints of old, a cloud of witnesses with us this morning. And those are daily departed, Lord, we pray that you receive them in your presence to the glory of your name. We pray for those, Lord Jesus, who are bereaved, those who are in, in sickness, those who are in various kinds of distresses, that we pray that your Holy Spirit touch each and every one of them in only the way that you, God, can touch them. Lord, hear the, uh, our prayers. Hear the prayers of distress. Hear the prayers of concerns. Hear the prayers of worries. Hear the prayers of gratitude. Hear the prayers of thanksgiving. And this morning, as we bring all of those to your throne of grace, we pray that, Lord Jesus, your blessings will come down upon us, that your mercy will be enough and enduring for us. We thank you that you have given us true this morning to rise and to come and glorify you, to rise and watch this service over, over, over the different social medias. And we thank you, Lord, that you have given us the opportunity to yet again come and praise your name. We hear, Lord Jesus, you can hear our prayers as we pray the prayer that you taught to your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, we, we, we pray this morning and we, we, we place ourselves into your care. We know, Lord, that we have failed to do the things that we are supposed to do and we have done those that we, we were not supposed to do. There are no, there are no any righteousness in us but your name and your holiness has come and found us. Your grace, Lord, is with us. We confess that we have not loved the way you love. We have not responded the way you have responded to us. That you loved us first and we are failing to return that which you have given to us. You have taught us, Lord Jesus, to be uh, brothers and sisters for one another. And we fail in all our endeavors to, work, to match up to the task that you have given to us. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Let your mercy fall on us this morning. Let your love be known by each and every one of us. Let your the gladness in our hearts transform into the witness to those who are we, 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 we will encounter today and forevermore. We pray, Holy One, for those who are still in darkness, those who do not know your name, those who are yearning, who your, your spirit still is knocking on their doors, the doors of their hearts, yet they are not hearing and they are not listening. We, we pray, Lord, that your mercy will come through the words of your servant this morning, that it will reach us, the good shepherd of Israel, the one who does not slumber nor sleep, one who goes and found those who are lost and leave those behind those who are secured. Lord Jesus, we pray that your, your security will be enough for us, that we'll be sufficiently satisfied by the, by the enduring love of your presence this morning. We thank you that you are a God who never leaves us, who promises that you'll, you'll lift us up, who promises that you'll be with us in darkness, in, through the valleys, and in all the places of praise, that your name will be exalted. We thank you and we bless your name. Take the service into your, your own control, Holy Spirit, and, and convict each and every one of us that we will hear only you. Silence all the other noises outside and give us, Lord Jesus, a peace that surpasses understanding. We pray this in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Um, we will then um, have, have hymn, hymn number 50. I'm just trying to look around and see whether the minister has arrived. We will take him number 50.
The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. be seated um those ones who are living on borrowed times will have to leave i am going to leave and hand over to reverend pukunzi who is here reverend pukunzi is allowed the uh, today to be um maybe come late because it was it was his birthday or it is his birthday today so um you know a birthday boy will have to sort of just make it himself comfortable and all the kind of things. I'm sorry, welcome. We have to make sure that. Oh, yes. <laughs> Take up.
Thank you so much. You know, when Before we start on behalf of Senoville Methodist Church congregants, yes, we are saying enjoy your day. Thank you so much. Good. I love it. I haven't seen it, but I love it. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I am used to nine o'clock. And I came very relaxed knowing that it's nine o'clock. And when I was told it's half past eight, Satan came. I had to speed. But when I came just to the mall here, the traffic was too much. All of a sudden, I said to myself, ah, oh, something must test you in this life. And you will never just be excused. You have to be tested. So I have to exercise. I have to have come with the character of Christ and exercise patience. I know my sister is here. He is looking after you while I'm still coming. Thank you so much. And thank you for really for my apology. I am sorry. I did not see the time. I'm used to nine o'clock. Thank you so much. You, you may be seated. Right, you did not do the readings. Did you sing my hymn 50? Sorry, thank you so much. So we are going to have two readings. One is from Psalms 23. And the other one is from... Let me just get my... John chapter 10, verses uh, 27 to 30. Is that so? 22 to 30. Okay. 22 to 30. Okay. My emphasis will be on 27 to 30. I will be, be there. That's why. Right. Let us listen to the word of God as he speaks to us this morning. Psalm 23, a psalm of David. Yesterday I was at a funeral and the preacher at the funeral took a text from 1 Samuel 17 and was talking about David was armored with God, not with the military gadget or uniform. He couldn't take it. So I'm reminded of that. We must become David and really clothe ourselves with God. And when we are clothed with God, the giant Goliath must die. Do we believe that? Do we believe that? If God is on our side, who can be against us? No one. Right. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall be in want he makes me lie down sorry i shall not be in want he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside quiet waters he restores my soul he guides me to paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us immediately turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 10. And reading from verses 22 to 30. The unbelief of Jews. 
Then came the feast of dedication in Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was in the temple area walking in Solomon's uh, colonnade. Oh, these terms that we have today like colonnade comes from the Bible. Sometimes you don't uh, recognize that people are biblical even in morse. The Jews gathered around him saying, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The miracles I do in my father's name speak for me. But you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listens to me, to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. I and the father are one. And this Again, the Jews picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many great miracles from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? And this is the word of God. And God bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let me just uh, share this with you. How many of us do have uh, slogans in your gadgets? And what does that slogan say to you? Mm -mm. I'm talking to a silent church. <laughs> We are no more in the, the severe lockdown. We can talk. What does it say to you? And why have you put that kind of a slogan? For me, it, it, it says a lot. Is it? Sorry. Let go and let go. What is the purpose of that slogan? not depending on yourself okay right i don't know whether you really have a biblical slogan do you have one do you have one what does it say to you whenever you open your gadget and you look at it what does it say what impact does it make in your own life Okay, let me tell you about the slogan that I'm bringing to you. You are in God, in good hands with God. You are in good hands with God. That is the slogan this morning. That is the theme this morning. But before that theme, who is God in your life? Who is God in your life? Is there any God? Oh, you are in good hands with God. The text that we are going 
to look at it's verse 28 in John 10. It says, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. For me, this impacts our lives, especially with the threat of coronavirus, COVID-19. There's a lot of stories now with vaccination and all these other things. There's a lot of confusion. Some of us don't even know whether to vaccinate or not, some of us, because there's so many things that are coming up. Now I want to bring to your mind this morning the slogan that Jesus says, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. We've got a big threat in the area of Muslim or Arabs or whatever. Now and again, we hear them uh, slitting or cutting the necks of Christians and making sure that they must die. And they are competing against this God that uh, Christians Christianity must be annihilated from the face of earth. Now, this is the slogan that says, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. No one. I don't know whether you believe this or I'm talking to people who don't believe this. The other thing is, why are you still here? Why God kept, kept you? You did not go with coronavirus. Why? What is your purpose? Right. Let me leave it at that point. No other name under heaven has been given to us by which we can be saved. No other name. It is only the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Where does the philosophy or the concept of advertisement come from? When I was looking at this slogan that I'm giving to you this morning, I asked myself, where does this philosophy or concept of advertisement come from? Do you know? All right. I realize that I'm not talking to human beings that can speak. Maybe this morning I'm, I'm looking at people who cannot speak at all. Good people. The purpose for advertisement is to sell a product to people. People must see it today with the television. You must see it and you must look at how people display the power that is in the product that is before you. And at the end of the day, it's to convince you and to tell you that this is the only good product that you can find that is the best in this kind of commodity. Is that so? And why people today, we most of us now with uh, Samsung, people are into Samsung. We were in Nokia the other time, now we are into Samsung. And now there's no uh, uh, other, other, other gadgets. And we are moving with fashion. And if somebody has this beautiful one, I also have to have it. We are so fashionable now of late. Are we sticking with one slogan that says to me, as Christians, are we sticking that I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my head. No one. The Allstate Insurance Company has 
a captivating slogan. In their advertisement, they claim, you are in good hands with all state. You are in good hands with all state. And that, when it came about, people flocked to this insurance company and they placed their lives under this insurance. Today, in our country, South Africa, after COVID-19, how many insurance companies have come up and trying to match other companies and trying to fight and find clientele that can belong to them? Is Christians who are in the church in the service this morning can go out and sell the product of this Christ who promises, I give you eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my God's hand. Can we sell that? Can we really go about and sell this to people? I was not here during notices. If there is any member of this church who is not attending this service or who is ill or who is at home or who is in other, uh, other places, how are you going to relate this morning's slogan to that person? Right, let me continue. You are in good hands with all state. This statement attracts many people, for there is within every human being the need and desire for security. People want their houses, cars, and especially their lives to be protected. Can we afford life insurance today? Are there still people who afford life insurance? Very difficult. It's very, very, very expensive. Right. God gave a graphic illustration of security when he pictured believers resting in his good hand. Good people, you and me have to smile all the time, knowing very well that our God, who has promised us eternal life, who has given us, as he says, you will never perish and no one shall snatch you out of my head. No one. Father, more gives us more than security, protection, defense, deliverance, holiness, sanctification. Let's look at other implications. I've got three things to say, then I'm going to finish. One, God makes a person. He created you. Right. Two, God uses a person. Three, God keeps a person. And I'll come to my conclusion and finish off. One, God created you and me. God's hands are you. God's mouth, voice is you. God's walking, walking to people, to any, it's you. Are you as created by God? representing him in all spheres as he promises you will never be snatched out of his hand there was a time when we were not in god's hands 
rebellious, cheating, idolatry, alienated from God, abusing, abusive. We were all those things. When we respond in faith to Jesus Christ, God begins a great work within us. Some of us never thought that we will be in the ministry in the Methodist Church of Southern Africa. We never thought we were doing our little things. I was doing commercial metric and I was in the line of becoming a, an accountant and then auditing then in those years where a big firms of audit, auditors to join them and become an auditor. And as I was in the process of getting myself qualified in that line, then came this God who said, you are not going there, you are going there. And I have to surrender my life into the hands of God. And today, I don't regret not even a minute that I speak his voice. I speak to these people. I walk. I am his hand every time. I have to say to people, God, God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Right. We will find green pastures. Saved refers to rescue operation. Find pasture. God's daily care. God offers provision, nourishment, growth. God will continue the work until the day of Jesus Christ, until the end of this world. So you will always be the ambassadors of Jesus Christ here on earth. God, number two, God uses a person. God does not just put a person in his hands just to save. He intends to use that person. We are not chosen to sit and wait for judgment day. No, no. We have to serve him. Elisha the prophet and his servant, when the ex head was lost, it was retrieved for use again. These people were chopping wood and their ex head fell into the river and the prophet Elisha got it. You know, he used a branch of a tree to retrieve it from the water. And that ex head had to be used to chop the wood. So you can never be lost in the hands of God. No one will snatch you out of God's hand. God wants you to be his instrument, use you to do his work of love, of sacrifice. In God's hands, we may be used to do much, though we are weak. Ordinary human beings are used. And in most cases, people want to be extraordinary, special to do God's work. No, no. If you go into the Bible and find out who God uses, you will be shocked. Dirty people, sinful people, weak people, any kind of a person God uses. As we have read Psalm 23, he used a shepherd boy to go and face Goliath the giant. And through Slinger fell, through the stone that he did not use armor that the military uses. And he said, in the name of my God, this giant I'm going to kill and I'm going to cut his head. And he did that. So God uses any person, anyhow. Even an atheist. Think of Rahab, the prostitute. When the spies went and 
hid in his inner house and got through uh, Rahab. God used uh, to now have a seat in the line of Jesus' ancestry. Right. Are you willing to be used as other people can be used by God? I'm not a golf player, but if the golf clubs are in the back and they are sitting there, until a person who plays golf knows which club to use for the first time, I was uh, in the military intervention, and then we were invited to a golf uh, tournament, something like that, and we were just taken, and I was one of them. My first ball with the club fell just next to me, and it was real, so embarrassing to other people. <laughs> How? What kind of a golf are you? <laughs> and at the end of the day, I said, this is my first experience to take this club and try it. Golfers, are there golfers here? Maybe they can take me for, <laughs> for a lesson in golf. But God uses people who compete in that, like uh, Tiger Woods. They have done so marvelously well in that. And we also, as Christians, we can compete in the same way and become God's instrument in whatever way. The last one is God keeps a person. The security of the believer depends on the nature and the character of God. Not on our power to hold on to God. Some people would say the church is going to die. Have we heard that statement? If you haven't heard it, I've heard it many a times. People claiming that the church of God is going to die. Because I have this problem with this and that and that in the church. This is a church of God. And he as he has promised, he will keep it for eternity because it is his. The church does not depend on individuals. The church belongs to God and him alone. He is in control. No one has the power to kill the church. Even the Muslim Radicals, they can try as much as they can. They can kill. Hitler did it. So many did it. But at the end of it all, God is still in control. COVID-19, coronavirus, you can come. You are not going to kill the church. This is the church of God. Thus, not mean license to sin when you are in the power of God. You have to be in God's hand all the time. A person who is in God's hand gradually experiences changes. And a person walks, when a person walks away from sin, then at the end of the day you experience change and you walk away from sin. This character of God it's so critically important that we also have become what God is to us. John Hedden Spurgeon was asked, do you believe in the perseverance of the saints? He, believed, he said, no, but I believe in the perseverance of the Savior. In conclusion, are you willing to put yourself in God's hands?
mountain climbers. Do we have mountain climbers here? Has any one of you? Yes, yes. He can relate to what I'm going to say now in conclusion. Mountain climbers always have new people with them. And the guide has to take care of the new climbers. Now, in this story, this guide has 30 years experience assisting people who are climbing a mountain for the first time. Now, they have to pass a yawning crevice in order to reach the top. The guide nimbly went over. Reaching back, he asked each of each to give him his or her hand. One driver was so doubtful when he looked, because when you look down at the crevice and you see then you have to doubt. But if you look over where the guide is, then you are going to just go through because you have the hand of a very experienced and trustworthy person. Finally, the guide reached for the man's hand once more and said, for 30 years, I have been helping men and women across this gap and i have never let one of them go yet will you reach out will you reach out your hand to me and after that entrusted his hands to the guide and the guide lifted him across you can never compete without finishing is that so you have to finish right will you reach out to the lord i give them eternal life and they shall never perish no one can snatch or pluck them out of my hand cross over the hand the good hand of god is there to pick you and let you cross over and in Jesus' name I have something to give to you that is the slogan that I'm intending you now to change your slogans in the gadgets and to put this one no one no one will snatch them out of God's hand no one in Jesus' name Amen. Let us pray. Crossing over into the unknown, crossing over from a secure land to one who, whose roads I have never walked. God, companion and guide, you are my transition coach. You say to me, cross over the bridge, go ahead, come over. It's sturdy enough. Don't look down though, or you might get terrified and never walk across. Don't look back too long, or you will lose courage and want to stay right where you are. Hang on, keep going. That's what bridges are for, to get you to the other side. Trust me to protect you. For all of us in transition who have bridges to cross, bless us, God, of the journey. Give us with the desire to go ahead. Help us to trust that the bridge will be strong and the risk will be worth it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. I don't have... What's the next? Is it the hymn? Okay.
let us see 709. Do we have it? Okay. Oh, the offering. Th thank you. I forget. <laughs> Sorry, before the. Let us give to God what is due to Him. And see each other's face. Glory and thanks to Jesus give for His almighty grace. Preserved by power divine to full salvation here. Again in Jesus' praise we join and in His sight appear. What troubles have we seen? What mighty conflicts past, <laughs> fighting without and fears within, since we assemble blessed, yet out of all the Lord hath brought us by his love and still. bless the offering birthday boy you must bring a lot of collection today to this church <laughs> we lived in the times of checks and now I thought that somebody will put a check here <laughs> let us stand up as we bless them. father God we thank you so much in this very difficult and challenging time where we find some of our colleagues, some of our friends losing their businesses, their jobs, and losing their loved ones. We are mindful that, dear Father God, as a church we have done just that much that we could, but not in the same way, the same impact that we used to have where many people would come to a home and say, we are with you. Be rest assured of our support. Whatever you need, just shout. Father God, we come before you this morning thanking you for the gifts of love that goes up to you. And thank you, Father God, for this church that you will keep it intact for as long as. And we ask you, dear Lord, to bless the leadership of this church, the ministry, and all the people who support this ministry. And bless each and every hand that gives. It is a cheering kind of a virtue. We ask you to bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Right. I've asked you, we are going to sing together the... Sorry. No, no, no. Oh, is that so? Thank you. Right. Let us all pronounce the benediction. Now unto him 
who is able to keep, able to keep me from falling, and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty. Dominion and power, both now and forever. Ah, ah, amen. Go in peace and a lot of peace be with you. Thank you. Bye. Amen.